Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another week of BlastCast. Of course, with me, as always, is my Bastion of Common Sense Lightning Dragon. And, of course, as you know, 2.6.1 is now live. Uh, for the most part, pretty good patch. Uh, there's still kind of frame rate issues in the PU, but that's because we don't have the Mega Map yet on the PU. Uh, but the frame rate issues, a lot better frame rate on Arena Commander and uh, also Star Marine as uh, more of that technology is incorporated there. And uh, there's still some issues, though, with the Super Hornets pips, basically, where they are not lining up correctly uh, at longer distances. You really have to get close sometimes, uh, especially if you're using things like the Gatling guns to make them effective. But other than that, pretty solid patch, and it uh, looks like 2.6.2 is on the table, so hopefully they address those issues by the time that comes out. Uh, upcoming here, we have a return of 10 for the chairman coming out soon right now they are taking questions from subscribers uh, about 3.0 so get some good questions out there if you're subscribers and please don't ask things we've heard the uh, we've heard asked a thousand times before <laughs> that's been my big complaint is there about gonna be space and space is there, yeah yeah that, that's a big problem I, I in the past that had with Tim for the chairman has been like the uh, you know hey it's the cutlass done like stop asking those questions you know, it's like, just come up with something new. Don't, don't just, they, they, they're not very good at remembering that they've answered some of this stuff before. Uh, of course, this Friday, we have the a Hurricane going on sale. And there's a lot of speculation, uh, since this is an Anvil fighter, uh, if it's going to be a light or heavy fighter, no one knows for certain yet. Guess we'll find out all that good information, pricing and everything. And, I think uh, it's going to be a battle cruiser with a very long <laughs> pyramid-shaped uh, kind of design with some little up-and-down wings that are jutting out on the back. And it might also have some little, little stabilizer fins on the front, you know, three per side. Um, but it'll be locked into using physical-based weapons, either, you know, uh, small rapid-firing, short-range things, or possibly long-range artillery. Oh, wait, that's a different game. Yeah, I was saying, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about EVE Online. With the oh, Hurricane yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> yeah, Mimitar. That's right. The description was a little weird there for a moment. Yeah, you said I, was, you, I was describing a Mimitar ship. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a picture. Well, you said pyramid shaped. I thought Stargate. So I was just like. Um, well, it's kind of pyramid shaped. Like a, if you took the top of the pyramid and stretched it really, really far back. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then and it made it fall over on its side. Well, next. <laughs> <laughs> you're throwing me off track here. That's fine. <laughs> uh, no, the, we're uh, gonna have Pyramid Head as a pilot. No, <laughs> he's gonna have a giant great sword for melee combat, and you there also you can't kill him. So it'll exactly. be really OP when uh, you know you start playing an Arena Commander or not melee Arena com Commander, the Star Marine. Melee swords confirmed. Uh, yes. No. So they they also showed uh, for the first time in engine in game the Prospector. They gave us a commercial, and tell you what, looking at this, it looks really amazing, and it looks like. They took a lot of the the the, uh, the textures and lighting effects that they took them straight out of the Starfarer, and they brought them directly to this model. And even even as far as the blanket goes for the for the, for the, like the little, little starship the, blanket yeah, or the, whatever. Yeah, that, that's like the 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 least manly blanket in the galaxy. But which someone did as a joke, and they just like kept it in. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean that's fine. It's funny. It's good to have a good sense of humor about this stuff. But man, that is that is one uh, like your five year old pilot flying the ship or something. <laughs> but anyway, no, it looks amazing. I'm really looking forward. This is one of the ships that I own, and uh, it wouldn't shock me to uh, this, to see this coming out before the mining even goes online, just to let us play around with it, or at least see sitting in the hangar. I I can see it going to hangar, but there's yeah. almost no point in making it flyable if there's no asteroids to mine. No, 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 no. Yeah, I said at least in the hangar. I really want to see this thing. And uh, they showed off some ship components. They showed uh, showed the shield and mining modules. They showed some of these off and in, in, in around the verse. And it, I really like seeing when they they model the uh, these different components because it's nice to see. Like they talked about how we're gonna have the ability to repair our ships and like open up these panels and basically go in there and repair things that are damaged. And so it's nice that these. These different components are going to look different, and you can open this up and say, "Hey, this is a so-and-so brand thing you got going on here," and you can identify what it is you're working on or what you're working with. And that's kind of cool. I like that. I think that's just kind of a, a nice kind of under the hood mechanic that uh, people who who really are into possibly being a mechanic in the game can really get into. Um, 
Then they showed the dragonfly being destroyed. <laughs> this was oh, this no. was this was this was yeah. Well, it was like I hadn't got a chance to fly it yet or anything like that. And they're sitting there blowing it up. That's not fair. No, but uh, the damage engine on that was looking really solid. And what was, what was interesting to me about that was not not just the damage engine. It was cool because as the, as the uh, as you were seeing the uh, the hull get ripped away, you could see the components underneath. Uh, what was nice about that was uh, with this demonstration, there was a rifle they were using that I've never seen in the game before, and I'm I'm not exactly sure if that's been revealed what that rifle is. They showed um, I think they showed a rifle, a different rifle earlier this week, but I'm not sure if that's the same. It didn't look exactly the same, but I'm kind of curious to know what that rifle is. And hopefully that'll be in game soon. So supposedly all the ships have um, damage states now or as you shoot away like the internal ar the external armor gets blown away and you can see internal structure oh, before it blows up absolutely. but the problem is ships blow up too fast well that's something they're going to have to work on uh, but you know like I took my um, I took my super hornet out and I had the uh, taken some damage uh, and I had had holes in the rear tail assembly and you could see right through and see the undercarriage the the, uh, the beams and the metal piping or whatever and it looked great I mean I don't like seeing my ship damaged but at least it looked good when it was it's just a hornet <laughs> don't get me started <laughs> uh, and then they showed us a um, a map of the Stanton system it was really cool they, they started off really small and they zoomed out to kind of give us an idea like here's what you were playing with right now and let's just show you what we're about to give you and as it pulls back and pulls back and pulls back, it's 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 amazing to think, you know, basically when 3.0 comes out that we're going to have the freedom to just have this much open space. And that's just one system in the game. We're all going to have room to breathe. We're all going to have room to do our own things and hopefully not basically so much oxygen in space. <laughs> so much oxygen in space. <laughs> uh, uh, it was a, that, that was an undiscovered, undiscovered country where uh, we need breathing room. And then Kirk says, Earth, Hitler, 1938. We need breathing room. Earth, Hitler, 1938. Uh, <laughs> so, what? You, you ever saw the undiscovered country? That's, that's a good line in there. But anyway. You mean Star Trek, right? Yeah, Star Trek, yeah. Oh, I, I might have seen it, but it's Yeah, Chang's, a long Chang time. says, Chang says, we need breathing room. Some of the Klingon Empire. And then, and then Kirk looks up and says, Earth, Hitler, 1938. <laughs> mm. So, anyway. So yeah, there, there's there's a, some there's some movie trivia for you guys. There, exactly, uh, a little bit too much of a sci-fi fan, I guess. But anyway, how, uh, how dare you love sci-fi and space and space games on a sci-fi and space game uh, YouTube channel? How dare you? <laughs> but you know, when I look at a, how big that system's going to be, I mean, honestly, I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking to myself, we could all be playing inside the Stan system, and you could play all day and not bump into another player. And that's there's moons on, uh, not on. I think there's moon. There's a moon orbiting Jupiter that's almost the same size as Earth, and it's a moon. Yeah, I mean, just, just. It's, I'm really looking forward to this. This is where I feel that Star Citizen might give me cargo shipping in there, and I'm gonna be a happy man. Um, we have here, of course, they showed uh, new images for the subscribers, and I'll put them up here of uh, Hurston showing early work at this location, including examples of some of the plant life that's going to be on the planet. It looks kind of like a deserty kind of location. Um, and the oh, way I that... may be mistaken. It might be Saturn. I don't know. I, I have to do more research on this. <laughs> well, you do it on your own time. This is my no, time. No, I must do it right now while we're doing a live <laughs> broadcast. Well, the, the, the <laughs> but Around the Verse this week was actually really good. Uh, if you didn't watch it, I really recommend you do. Uh, they, they give a lot of good information. And, and because of the nature of of Around the Verse today, we have a very oh, special no. <laughs> edition of the Hornet Report. <laughs> Welcome to the Hornet Report. We're going to be the... <laughs> we are okay, going to be... going all out this time. Yes, I'm going all out this time. Uh, where we're going to be discussing the whole evolution of the Hornet design. And, of course, they give a really nice walkthrough. We'll give you a nice breakdown here. The Hornet was designed from, or originally uh, was named after, the F-36 Hornet from Wing Commander. That was the inspiration. And uh, originally, when it was uh, requested to be designed, it was supposed to be a light fighter. And when the concept came in, and it, it kind of liked the way it looked, and it kind of decided to make it a medium fighter, and kind of went with that. No, uh, no I, w I was right. It's... Oh, I can't pronounce these stupid moon names. Whatever. <laughs> it, it is Jupiter's moon, but it, Ganymede? 
garbage. I bashed you to common OCD, Lightning Dragon. No. I, I can't freaking <laughs> do the words, okay? <laughs> okay, that's why. <fine. laughs> anyway, the, uh, the Hornet replaced the Avenger in the UEE fleet. And um, the, first, uh, the first models that were put into the game that you saw in the initial uh, pitch for the game when it came out, the Hornet, the Scythe, and the Bengal, were all created by a company called CG Bot. Uh, which gave uh, Chris Roberts kind of a nice discount on creating these initial models, so they go ahead and get that, do that trailer. And it was two years after the initial Kickstarter that the, uh, the the Hornet went back through a remodel. Now, when they did the initial remodel, of course, everything that they had working on the original model, every time they changed something or they, they changed a part or whatever, it caused the whole ship basically to break. You'd have, oh, we fixed this, now the guns don't work, and we fixed this, now the landing gear don't work, or so on and so forth. So it took a month for them to basically create all these new parts, put it together, and make sure that basically the systems worked because of all those random unknown variables that kept coming up. And uh, the Super Hornet uh, was then added to the lineup. Uh, basically, Chris Roberts stated that he got the inspiration for the Super Hornet from the real-world F-18 Hornet, probably the trainer version, of course. And um, after that, yeah, he, because the F eighteen is a single seater. Which yeah. Well, either way, quoted himself. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he was thinking the fourteen. <laughs> I'm just but going off what 18. he said. <laughs> well, then after that, the PBR was added back into uh, was was put into the game, and they had to go back and rework the models and make sure that PBR was incorporated. And CIG began then, after that point, began working on the F-7A military models of the Hornet. Now, this is the one that interests me the most. I, I know that, Lightning, you think that the military version, you call it the turtle. It is um, the turtle. But the I like turtles. too big. Uh, so. Also, it's not as big as the Earth, but it's bigger than our moon. <laughs> I'm, I'm keeping this thing on a roll. This, this is the, <laughs> the, the moon, moon science edition of Blastcast. Oh, my gosh. It's like NASA.gov is like interrupting me. Uh, so oh, yeah, eat that. Back <laughs> so, <to> common sense. <laughs> so the uh, now a couple of years ago uh, during on Veterans Day, as a kind of a charity drive, uh, backers were offered a chance for twenty dollars to buy a coupon that would allow you to go ahead and change your Hornet skin to the military skin. Now you won't get military performance parts. You won't get military. Uh, performance anything but they, the, the physical changes to the ship itself since you'll be using a military body they say will have some minor effects maybe like you know your, your basically your profile things like that uh, so we'll have some effect in game but right now we we've been sitting on this coupon and I've been avidly waiting to apply it to fly one of these military versions because to me they look so much better and uh, I hope to see that. There's, oh. there's no denying that there are many aspects of the, the, the quote-unquote F7A1 or whatever they're titling the thing as. Uh, that's, that's much better. Um, but it's nice to see them not just completely ignore the original model. And yeah, I agree. And got an overpass as well. Well, what I'm thinking is, you know, as far as that coupon being applied, um, remember how they said that they were in the debate that when the Idris was done, if they would even let the players fly it until Squadron 42 was released because they didn't want to ruin the surprise? Yeah. Uh, in, in my opinion, I think that's what's going to happen with the Hornet and the military coupon as well. Uh, that they're going to let, let Squadron 42 come out. People play it. They fly the military Hornet. Yeah, because that'll be part of the story. You'll be flying right. the military Hornet, which right. is the and newest then, version. And then they'll let you apply that coupon at that point in time. Um, that's what I'm going to guess here. And I, and I might be wrong, but to me that seems to go along the lines of what they said with the Idris. Um, then they went back through on the Mark 1 Hornet and did another redesign pass after they finished the military versions. And uh, new damage tech and model adjustments were done. Uh, variants were very fast to update as, as basically they shared a lot of the common components. There was obviously some differences, for example, between the tracker and the ghost and things like that. But for the most part, the wings and everything else was, was the same. So that was easy to do. Uh, once they finished that, the Super Hornet rework began. And that couldn't be done the same way because basically the Super Hornet has a lot of unique parts. Now they share... Like almost uh, shares nothing. Yeah, well, it shares a lot of the same attributes, but like the wings are bigger and so on and so forth. And the Cockpit's intakes. bigger, the, right. the displays are different. Well, displays are the same now, but but also oh, well, we got this, but you got displays before. in the back now too. So I haven't sat in the back yet, so I have to see how that how those look. But yeah, they had to approach it differently. So, but after all this time, we finally have the Super Hornet. I feel up to a state that looks pretty good. Um, there's only one Super Hornet we deserve, but not the one we need. <laughs> there was one main complaint I still have on the Super Hornet. Now, any Super Hornet owners out there know. 
um, the landing gear that are in the wings. Uh, now, when they descend and the wings fold back, as you know, the little door of the landing gear that flaps open clips into the body. Now, I, I think they should need to make that door flip the other way, and then it won't be any clipping issue. But other than that, I think the model is, is pretty close to as good as it needs to be now. So I'm happy with it. I can actually or, or use... Or they just make it explode. Um, so <laughs> if you want your landing gear down, it just it just has uh, inerrancy explosion bolts, and it just flies that stupid little flap off You really off don't there. like the Hornet, do you? And then you <laughs> never have to worry about that little flap clipping again. Because as soon as you put the landing gear down, it goes boom, and you're like, what the hell is that? Oh, it's just the explosive bolts popping. Well, I also <laughs> thought that they, they, they could they could actually, instead of having it flip flip uh, forward or backwards like they you know they do right now, have it actually physically attached to landing gear. So you remember how World War II, a lot of fighters, the landing gear would come out, and and, and, yeah. and, the, and it was part of the wing was actually attached to the outside of the landing gear so it would fold yep. it would fold yeah i could i mean the inside so yeah you do something like that and you resolve that issue as well so i believe I um the wildcat or the hellcat had that where yeah. um the, the the wheel part that folded t um towards the center of the body mm -hmm. and then the, um, the rest of it that was um it was just bolted right onto the um the, the struts for the landing gear yeah yeah so song that something like that the big thing for me is, I know it's a minor thing, but I hate it when parts clip into one another. It just looks 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 lazy. Um, and I'm the same it, way. Especially it breaks with, immersion. with clothing on characters in video games. Like, oh, this I hate clips. that. That's why I don't take long hair in most of my character models, because they always end up clipping through something, and it drives me insane. Um, but, you know, yeah, that's that's why I always look for, like, the short hair, you know, the short haircut or something. Um, but, yeah, the uh, the damage states... No heavy that they... metal rock gods for you. <laughs> no heavy metal rock gods. Unless they got spiky, like, anime hair or something. <laughs> um, but they went over the damage states as well. And the original damage states that they, they used, uh, every 25% damage uh, state, they would swap parts. So if a wing is at 25, 50, 75, 100, uh, those parts were swapped. And it was a very static system. Now the new damage states, uh, they they can they be applied it was anywhere. They a very laggy system as well. Right. Well, because you're swapping parts, and and it causes a real issue because you know if damage comes in quick enough, you could be swapping on a part two, three, you know, times in a, in a course of a, just a second or so. So yeah, and what I like what they've Gee, done with I, the new. I wonder what they could do to fix that. Well, with the new damage states, uh, one of the things I like that the artist was talking about is that he has hand placed explosive squibs. All over the ship asymmetrically so basically like so that the explosions don't look the same and the parts that break off don't look the same on both sides so you don't end up with this kind of weird inverted copy paste broken wing and i think that's kind of nice i kind of like to see those kind of things i'm hoping that that uh that there's enough dynamic in there that that'll even you know break up a little bit like so that the right wing doesn't always break the same way you know but i don't know we'll see what happens with that but still it's nice to know that they're not just mirroring the damage on that um, so there was an issue uh, when I was playing on the PTU where you couldn't group the uh, weapons in the Super Hornet. Luckily now in live that's been resolved, uh, you can actually go ahead and group your weapons. Thank goodness. Uh, so the main thing, as I said in the beginning of the video, is that PIP needs to be, um, needs to be worked on so they can get basically stop having to lead my target well past where the PIPs are so I can actually hit something. And also work your work on your ai i don't like this roll lazy to the left thing it's very annoying but they know some maneuvers <laughs> oh my god that's family guy reference of course so <laughs> don't worry we'll on, we'll... Some maneuvers. where do you go <laughs> there he is drifting lazily to the left <laughs> so anyway so they that was pretty much everything there on our special edition of the hornet report brought to you by lightning dragon i don't know why it's brought to you by me because <laughs> it irritates you <laughs> <laughs> maybe it does Exactly. Um, anyway, so the, the last part they talked about was the now they've got the regional servers up and running. The first three, anyway. Um, and the reason they wanted to go this route, of course, is owning and operating their own servers are very expensive. And with the new cloud-based servers, they can rent exactly what they need when they need it. Uh, CIG doesn't have to pay for server maintenance, part replacement. If a fan goes out or something like that, the, the servers can be switched automatically. And the game doesn't have that kind of downtime where, oh, the server busted, we're going to be down for 12 hours or repair. No, it just rolls over to one of the cloud servers. Players may have a, have a brief interruption, but nothing like you would see if it goes down inside their own building. Um, servers can be placed in many locations in the world now. Uh, these can be expanded as a, or shrunk as the population changes in the game. And locations as well can be added and also removed. And they originally 
when they started making the the game, they had one one computer tower they were using to put all their builds together, and these cloud server technology also allows them to create faster internal builds as well. So it's been very very useful for them in coordinating across all their different studios. And right now, the current new servers are located in Virginia, Frankfurt, and Sydney. Now, when you go into uh, the game or you choose a persistent universe, you'll notice in the bottom here, uh, you'll have it'll be set at all. And if you want to choose one in particular, just click on it and go ahead and select what region you want, USA, uh, Europe, or Australia, and then select it and then join. And that should get you uh, the most optimal connection you can for your location. And now, this now if you still want to join your friend, say you have a friend, you're in Australia, and you have a friend in the United States, you can still join them. I don't of course, know anybody who has friends like that. <laughs> well, if you have friends across the seas or whatever, and you want to join them, uh, you can you can do it. Uh, but you will be routed to their. Uh, you'll you'll have to route to to their location, and of course you will be subject to the lag issues again to a degree. So that's a factor to consider. So you know, my my advice there is just stop having friends that are long ways away. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, Get some real friends. friends. Get some real that, friends. No, I'm just that kidding. That are only within throwing rock distance. Throwing rock distance. Or 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 if you're really hardcore star citizen, you may want to consider moving to Virginia, Frankfurt, or Sydney, <laughs> 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 and locate the exact server building. And you are gonna have the most awesome ping that anyone has ever seen. Like, what's your ping? Zero point one. You know, <laughs> just like you're living, you're living upstairs from the server room. You're that hardcore. You, you've drilled a hole through the wall and plugged right into their direct <laughs> local network. Exactly. I, I, I live in an alleyway, but my server ping is amazing. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's everything for this week's Blastcast. As always, feel free you, to you comment did, stuff. What? You, you did tell me one. Uh oh. Massively important thing right before we started. Uh oh. Remember what it was? No. It had, it had to do with my favorite ship that's completely worthless. Oh, yeah, yeah. The optimized the retaliator bit. Oh, yeah. Like the ship that you can't play. <laughs> well, not unless you have like five, five, five friends. Who has five friends nowadays? Come on. <laughs> don't you don't want you to know anything about the internet? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. The retaliator, they optimized a bit because it was eating up frame rate, so... Yeah, Which there's is, that. It's always fun when I accidentally pick the retaliator when I want to fly my Hornet when it I go to the Arena Commander. Commander. Yeah. And it's kind of like, why is my Hornet flying like crap? Why don't I have any guns? What's going on? I guess why I'm don't you recognize people. that you're not in, why don't you recognize your cockpit is not a Hornet's cockpit? That's my <laughs> Because <laughs> the Hornet cockpit keeps changing. <laughs> and it, it's all so similar. It's just a bunch of freaking giant ball freaking radar you can't see around. You're like, stupid, you see the character's head. You radar. see the character like his head leaning up and around the radar, going trying to see over the top of it. Like, where the hell am I going? Where am I going? <laughs> you know, is I'm blind. I'm blind. <sighs> no. So, uh, anyway, guys, uh, feel free to leave your comments down below. Uh, if you like what we do here, please let your friends know about this channel. We always love to get more voices to join the Citizen Gamer community. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. We're now with special edition uh, news about our solar system that actually is not news at all. It's just regular facts that you should just <laughs> you look up on your own time and not have me repeat it. Bye, everybody! <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs>